<laughs> okay, it's up to you guys. If Hunter's okay. Hunter's letting you do that first, that's very yeah. nice of Hunter. <clears throat> What books are we reading, you guys? Gonna We're going to read Ranger Rick Magazine, the new issue, and this is the July 1992 issue. Well, I'm going to read three bear books. There won't be enough to get all those on, but we'll start here. This is a story about the three bears. Here they are. Look at them. They all look weird. They do look weird, don't they? Yeah. They look weird. What's day is today? Today is July 11th, 1992. Okay. Here are the three bears. Papa bear, mama bear, and baby bear. Which one is this? Baby bear, baby Where did we go today? We went to the movie, didn't we? Travis was with us. Willie's up in Alaska. This is me. This is me. Okay, Sadie. I can see my belly button. I can too. Anyway, Travis is with us. Willie's in Alaska on vacation. School is out. Mommy, we all just got back from New York City and from. I took away his belly button. Yeah, New York City. Where else do we go? Twitter. Else do we go in New York? Yeah, I'm Terry Town, New York. Terry Town, New York. Okay. This one is Daddy Bear. Look at him. And. Terry Town, New York. Let me read the book. This one is the Mommy Bear. This one's the Mommy Bear right here. Look at her. Does she look weird? This one is Baby Bear Cheyenne. It's my well, I'm sorry, honey. Don't grab it. What are you doing with your hair? Look at this. <laughs> they go for a walk. Here's Goldilocks. No one is home, says Goldilocks. I can go in. So she's going into the Three Bears' house. Goldilocks wants some porridge. Here's Daddy's porridge. Oh, it's too salty for Goldilocks. She goes, ah. And then... Here's Mommy's Bear's porridge. It's too sweet for Goldilocks. Blah, she says. But then here's Baby Bear's porridge. Oh, I like this porridge, says Goldilocks. Look, Baby Bear has no porridge because... She ate it all up. Goldilocks ate it all up. And Goldilocks looks for a chair. This is Daddy Bear's chair, but it's too hard for Goldilocks. And here's Mama Bear's, but it's way too soft for Goldilocks. And here's Baby Bear's chair. I like this chair, says Goldilocks. And she sits down and... Uh-oh, she broke the chair. I want to go to sleep, says Goldilocks. I can go up here. And she goes up the stairs. Now, Daddy Bear's bed is too hard. And mommy Bear's bed is too soft. No, lumpy. That's just too soft here for Goldilocks. And then she saw Baby Bear's bed and she says, Oh, I like this bed, says Goldilocks. And so she lays down, gets under the covers, and goes sound asleep. The bears come home and they go into their house. Oh! <laughs> Look, says Baby Bear. The chair's broken. I have no porridge, he says. The bears go up to look for Goldilocks. Up we go, says Daddy Bear. Uh-oh, here they come. Look, says Baby Bear, it is Goldilocks. And Daddy Bear says, yes, it is Goldilocks. And Baby Bear's going, Rawr! Why are you doing that, Shy? I'm going to be Goldilocks. No, I don't want to Goldilocks. Goldilocks jumps up. You can go home, says Baby Bear. Go home, go home. And Goldilocks runs down the stairs. And out the door. And away she goes because she's afraid that the bears are going to eat her up. Come on, This danger Okay, this is a Stranger Rick magazine. What in the world is that? A turtle. Boy, this says this is a diamond back turtle. And it looks as if it's happy to be alive. Diamondbacks live on the eastern and the Gulf Coast of the United States. About 80 years ago, people killed a lot of them for soup. And now they're doing better because people don't eat so much turtle soup anymore. Hey, you think it's yucky? I guess. I don't know. Pretty poison. This frog is tiny. He's shown real big here, but actually he's only about this big. But its very colorful cousins are very yuck to anything that tries to eat them. Because they're poison. Look at these. Look at, aren't these frogs? You can almost, it's hard to see them, can't you? 
Mm. Can you? It's uh, it's almost impossible to see them against the green. No, the one of the dogs froze. Yeah, Looks yeah, like yeah. The one on pretty the other weird. Picture. Here it says, The Adventures of Ranger Rick. Can Rick and the gang rescue four baby raccoons who have been trapped? Mm. It says, Ranger Rick's cousin, Ruth, Ruthie, was crying so hard she could barely talk. And and I thought I'd hidden my youngsters so well. <laughs> Oh, they're going to need my milk pretty soon. But somebody got them. We've got to do something to save them. <laughs> the mommy was crying and crying and crying. Another case of kidnapping in deep green wood, said Adora the skunk angrily. Why can't people just leave young wild animals alone? You're right, Odie. Young wild animals need to be with their mothers, said Ranger Rick. Well, earlier in the day, Morgan Mockingbird had seen a boy and a girl carry off Ruffy's four youngsters, four little baby raccoons. And Morgan had followed the children and had seen them put the little raccoons in a cage in their backyard. And then Morgan had flown deep into the deep green wood to tell Ruthie and Rick what had happened. The children may try to sell Richie's youngsters to a pet store, Morgan said. Punky Porcupine spoke up. What are we waiting for? Let's rescue Ruthie's babies right now. Those kids shouldn't have taken the babies away from the mama. They shouldn't have either, should they? Mm. No. <laughs> Hold on a minute, said Morgan. There's a problem. His name is Brutus, and he's about to be the toughest ready-for-a-fight dog I've ever seen. He guards the backyard where the four young raccoons are. Well, Rick remembered Brutus only too well. One day the children had turned him loose in the deep green wood, and Rick had been forced to climb a tree fast, and he'd never forgotten how scared he was. Punky swung her back end from side to side and shook her quills. I'll rescue Ruthie's babies by myself if I have to, said the porcupine. Thanks, Punky, said Rick, but we ought to work out a plan so all of us can help, and we'll stand a better chance of getting the babies if we do. So let's try to get the young raccoons tonight. Uh-oh. So Rick kept quiet about his fear of Brutus, the Brutus the dog, but sure wasn't looking forward to meeting that dog again, because that dog might just kill him. And so late that evening, the five friends got together, and a full moon helped Morgan to lead the way. And here, Morgan's the bird, I guess, isn't he? And uh, lead the way to the children's house. And as the animals had hoped, the house was dark. Now Morgan showed the others a hole that he had spotted in the wire fence around the yard. And Odie and Punky checked it out to be sure it was wide enough for them to call through. I'll go with you, Punky, whispered Ruthie. Wait, said Rick. I think it's better for just Odie and Punky to handle this. Meanwhile, Rick, Ruthie, and Morgan hid in some bushes that grew near the fence. Just on the other side of the fence was Brutus's doghouse. And he was lying beside it, his ears cocked for the slightest sound. And suddenly, Brutus heard a voice. Meow. It said, Hey, Mutt, you can't catch a flea on your own ratty tail. Morgan Mockingbird was very good at imitating voices. He sounded like some big bad tomcat. In a second, Brutus was up, growling, and he hurled himself at the fence. Meow. Why don't you jump over the fence, Morgan Tees? Come on, Frady dog, I dare you. The bird's pretending to be, <laughs> be a cat. Now, Punky and Otis listened to the angry dog. Ooh, look at this doggy. Uh-oh. He looks like he's an awful doggy. Yeah. Is he going to come after him? He looks like a bad domination. Looks kind of like a wolf dog, though, on the face, doesn't it? What's a bad nomination? Boy, I sure hope that Morgan can keep the dog's attention, whispered Odie nervous, nervously. Well, now she and Punky had slipped through the fence and had found the cage. And the little raccoons pressed their noses against the cage wire. And they squeaked at Punky and Odie and they tried to touch them with their tiny claws. Your mama's close by, said Odie in a soft voice. Don't be afraid. We're coming to get you out of here. Boy, said Punky, this latch is tight. And she and Odie tried, took turns trying to work on it and trying to open it up. 
Outside the fence, Morgan whispered to Rick, crawl through the hole in the fence, and maybe if Brutus sees you, we can keep him away from Punky and Odie a little bit longer. Well, Rick just looked at Morgan, and he didn't move. What's the matter with me, he thought. Those are my friends in there, but he was too scared to do anything. Ranger Rick was really afraid that that dog might get him. And suddenly there was a crash from inside the yard, and Punky had given the latch one last tug, and the latch snapped open so quickly it threw her backward, it threw her backward into a pile of firewood, and the firewood tumbled down, and everybody heard it. Brutus whirled around and ran toward the noise, and when he saw Odie standing there, he growled, and then he charged. Now, Odie was frightened. She'd never seen such a big dog before, so she got ready to, s to spray her skunk juice. But just then, a brown blur jashed between Odie and the dog, and it was Ricky, Ranger Rick, and he was moving faster than Odie had ever seen him run. Look at here he goes. He's running. And Rick led Brutus on a chase around and around the yard, and he was getting tired quickly, but he had to keep Brutus busy until his friends were safely out of the yard. And it all seemed like a nightmare, running endlessly from Brutus, and he could almost feel the dog's hot breath on his tail. And just as Brutus was about to catch Rick, something dashed toward the dog from the side. It was Punky. The porcupine had helped Odie and the youngsters through the hole, and now she'd returned to help Rick. And Punky swung her quilled tail and all those sharp, you know, those sharp spikes that she has. She swung her quick quilled tail at Brutus as he raced past her. The dog saw the danger and jumped out of the way at the last second, but he lost his balance, and with a loud yelp, he fell into a tangle of bushes. Come on, Rick, let's get out of here, said Punky, as lights flashed on in the house. Once Rick and Punky got back to the deep green wood, they looked for Ruthie and Odie. And when they found them, Ruthie was giving her little ones a much-needed meal. She, Mommy was giving the little ones some milk to drink. And Morgan was perched on a bush beside her, and smiling, Odie watched the happy scene. I want to thank you all for helping save my little ones, said Ruthie. That was a brave thing you did, Rick. I'm glad Punky stopped Brutus just in time. I thought he had you. And suddenly it dawned on Rick. He had been brave after all. I didn't mind admitting it now, he said, but the truth is I was scared to death. That Brutus is one mean dog. And then he added, wow, the children could... Won't the children be surprised when they see the empty cage? Well, I hope they don't go back into the woods and try to take some other animals, said Punky. Uh, it's possible, said Rick, but some of the rangers live around here. I'll ask them to talk to those kids. They can let them know if it's let them know that it's wrong to take baby animals from the wild, isn't it against the law? Said Odie. It is here and in many states. Said Rick. And it also can be dangerous. Some baby animals can carry diseases, and sometimes deadly diseases like rabies. So it's a bad idea even to pick up wild animals. And knowing your ranger will help us to make me feel a little better. Knowing your rangers will be helping us makes me feel a little better, said Ruthie, looking at her youngsters. Bellies full, the little ones curled up in a tight ball, safe once again, and sound asleep. Oh, so they saved the kids. Huh? What are these? Butterflies under the ground, in the, under the water, in the ocean. These are little lion things that are in the water. Look at the mouths on them. Wow. These are called lion sea slugs. These snail cousins look like two fierce lions roaring at each other. Whoa, what about that kind of a car? Cool, I want that kind of a car. Do you like that? Wait, what about I want that kind of car? Well, these are little models that the kids race. And that's a big kind of car. It's, it looks to me like it's probably a solar I car. I want this. Oh, this kind of yeah, yeah. As a solar car, you know what makes it go? Wow. The sun. The sun is a collector, and it gives the car energy, and the car runs on it. Oh, I want that. Okay. What is that? A little puppy. It's a caterpillar. Caterpillar. The one, the one, the caterpillar like that ankle. Here's its go. eyes, right there. See. These are its kind of nose, and these are its pinchers. And what's that? Another kind of caterpillar. And I'll come 
It's like that first and then it turned into that. Because that's how they grow. It turned into a furry caterpillar. Careful, honey. Don't hit the, the tape player here, okay? You set it on my foot. Well, honey, there's no room. You have to put your foot over here. Don't put your foot right under the tape player. Look at this. There's more kinds of caterpillars. That looks like a cactus, doesn't it? Mm. Yucky. That looks like thing. a leaf. This is called Little Spitter, and it looks like a leaf, but actually it's a caterpillar. What's that? Caterpillar. I know, but look at its head. It looks like a snake. Big, it says no sea eyes. Big black eyes on this Asian shallowtail butterfly. It's a caterpillar, of course, above. It'll turn into a butterfly later. Make an enemy think twice before attacking. The enemy may believe this caterpillar is fierce. On the other, uh, or the enemy may think it's not a caterpillar at all, but a scary snake instead. Ugh. Where are the caterpillars real eyes? They're the tiny brown dots down at the side of its head. Down here, there's little tiny dots there. That's, her, that's what its real eyes are. These are not really eyes there. It just makes it look like a snake. But can you see all of those eyes? I don't know. Okay. See, and then after it becomes a caterpillar for a while, it blossoms out and it becomes a um, that butterfly. Kind of butterfly. Yeah, all kinds mm -hmm. of butterflies. Ooh, what's the snake? <laughs> snake paws. He's going burp. <laughs> Wonder what it's like to be a park ranger, it says. Nothing. Park rangers have to learn how to shoot and ride motorcycles and go up and down mountains in the snow. They even have to be able to tie up alligators, it looks like, huh? They don't hurt people. Yeah, I wouldn't want to now. I don't wouldn't want to go in the water. I want to make one of these. Make the amazing make tin can casting machine. I want to make oh, one the of these. I want to make one of these. Okay, well, what it is is to fish, honey. We don't really have any place to fish. I and want to fish. No, no, um, it's, I'll just make it first so people can look at it. Oh, that's a, that's a good idea. Now I'll make it so people can look at it too. Okay, what's this little mouse? <laughs> it's a cute little baby mouse. It says, would a mouse family adopt this tiny little stranger? And they said, yep, the mommy took him in. Oh, look at that. They're playing. Mm. Isn't that cute? Mm. Peanut butter and jolly. The kids left this yummy snack in the kitchen for the little one, and the adventurous mouse went right to it. Now, look at him standing up here. It looks like he's trying to get a grape, isn't he? Yeah. He a few weeks ago, the young adopted mouse left her family for good. Good luck, little one. And, of course, that's what's on the front cover, isn't it? The mouse, and the mouse is eating a raspberry. What do you think yeah. about that? What about those green things? Well, they're not uh, ripe yet. Okay, now. He even likes mm. rotten. <sighs> Do you not want Bernstein bears? I want that. Little Piggy and the Giant Bubble. Piggy's adventure began about eight when most of the babies had sat down to wait for Nanny to bring their cereal bowls and their glasses of juice and their cinnamon rolls. So they're all sitting here saying, Oh, I want my breakfast. Are you Miss Piggy? Yeah, I'm Kermit the Froggy. Hunter's Kermit the Froggy. Well, Miss Piggy's in love with you then. In a bowl, Piggy mixed up some soap and water. I mean, I'm Then dipped fuzzy. in her pipe, just like Nanny had told I mean, her. I I'm Fozzie. Okay. And blew out some bubbles, all shiny and bright, and they floated and glittered, reflecting the light. You guys have done bubbles before, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, can we get one of these? That's for me. A bubble pipe, maybe. We yeah, see one in our store. Pipe. Sure. You see one this and I want a bubble pipe. And I want a bubble pipe. Pipe? Pipe? P -p -p pipe? Yeah, I want a bubble pipe. Well, Piggy, watch. But this is what might happen to you. You might go off in the bubble. I wouldn't. I don't know. Piggy did. Piggy watched one big bubble sail up to the ceiling. She closed her eyes tight and imagined the feeling of drifting and soaring up into the air instead of that bubble to heaven knows where. Inside of that bubble. Boy, then the board will pop that. Daddy back. is tired tonight, huh? Then the board will pop that. Back. Yeah, right. 
And she suddenly was. She was floating up high out of the nursery window. Now look, what would happen if you did this and all of a sudden you started to float up into the sky like we What would happen, Cheyenne? I wouldn't be able to catch you. You'd just be floating up, up, up higher into the sky. Pop the no, you a bubble pop the bubble in your catch. Well, if you pop the bubble, you would fall. I'd have to be right directly under you to have a No, catch Hunter you. will. Hunter will catch you as you fall down out of the sky? No, Hunter will fall down out of the sky. Well, you're the one that got in the bubble. But I'm going to go in the bubble in Oh, I don't know. Yes, she bounced no. towards a tree and then came down to rest in a newly made, slightly stayed, tidy, trim nest. And filled with tiny blue eggs, less than half Piggy's size. Blue eggs, Piggy said. What a pleasant surprise. And look at she's on top of them. Uh-oh. Then, just, just then in a rush, a plump robin flew by. She stopped and she stared and then she let out a cry. For one of her eggs was unusually big. And what's more, the big egg held a cute little pig. That's me. Uh-oh. The mother bird squawked and the mother bird fluttered. And she leaned very close to the bubble and muttered, A pig in my nest? Why, that doesn't seem right. I hope you won't mind if I seem impolite. You're a bit out of place, so you really can't stay. And then with a gentle push, she sent Piggy away. She probably just brushed her with her wings. What do you think? Yeah. Now, where's Piggy going now? Into the circus. Into the circus? No, the dirt. The circus. Is that the, the circus? circus. Show? a circus. A breeze caught the bubble. Away Piggy went till she blew through the door of a big circus tent. Now the audience clapped and Piggy bounced off the knees of an upside down man on a flying trapeze who gave her a kick and she landed intact smack dab in the middle of a juggler's hat. Act. Act, juggler's act. Oh, Daddy is so tired he can't keep his eyes open. The juggler just flipped. There had been nine balls, and now there were ten in the air, and he didn't know how. To juggle that many, oh dear, Piggy said, as he fumbled the doll, the balls, and he fell on his head. Uh-oh. And Piggy was juggled right out of the tent, and she circled a street, and then she made a descent near a stadium filled with a crowd watching soccer. What's that, yelled a soccer fan. Somebody block her. Look at they're playing soccer down there, aren't they? But no one could stop her. She just missed the mare, then bounced off the toe of a shock soccer player. And the bubble spun out and careened around a pole, and then it whizzed past the stands to the other team's goal. Garsh, called the ref, and the winning team cheered. I protest, cried the kicker. A pig interfered. Pardon me all, Piggy said. I didn't mean to cause trouble. I'm a pig, not a ball, just a pig in a bubble. Cheyenne, you want to be a bubble and float around like this? Yeah. And what happens if you pop it? She'll fall. Nobody catch. Will she fall in the net? No, she just fall from out of the sky. <laughs> No, I'll fall into water and into a hot tub. And swim? Okay, I'll stand up. And swim? No, I won't swim. Okay, okay, okay. Will okay. You scream? I'll go. The ref crossed the bubble so far that it flew past the bus stop, the toy I'll store, crying. the park, and the zoo. Look at it, it's going over everything. Here's the whole town. It flew over the zoo, it went over the park, over the store, Toy over the train. It blew through the smoke of a puffing freight train, and the smoke puffed the bubble right up to a plane. Then the plane pops in and she falls into the ground, and then she falls right in the, into the tree chimney. Well, I want to tell you what's happening. The pilot was spelling out words in the sky. He didn't look up to the as the bubbles flew by, but when he was finished, he noticed an O that didn't belong at the end of go. go. Zzz, there she is floating up there. My go, gasped the pilot. This never will do. A go with two O's isn't a no, go, it's a goo. It's a cloud. 
Yeah. See, it didn't spell go anymore. G-O spells go, but when you add another O, it spells goo. Goo. <laughs> yeah. So the bubble swooped down, looped around, and just then, Piggy saw she was back near the nursery again. And the bubble stopped near a s top of a tree. And when it came face to face with a striped bumblebee. Uh-oh. A bumblebee's in a pocket. Now the bee called the bubble. The bee eyed the bubble, and poor Peggy trembled. She called to her friends, who all acted assembled, quickly assembled. <laughs> poor Daddy can't read tonight. Help, Piggy shouted. I think I'm in trouble. One sting from this bee the means the end of my bubble. Uh oh. And we'll find a solution. Hot Cheyenne, let me finish this one. We'll find a solution called Kermit. Don't worry. The sooner the better, said Piggy. Don't hurry. And after much consolation involving debate, they came up with a plan that was truly first rate. We've got it, cried Kermit. We know what to do. We'll send up a staircase of bubbles to you. And so they just look at the bee, pop the bubble. The bee hovered closer. The bubble went pop. And Piggy bounded down the staircase and came to a stop. And right next to her friends on the nursery floor, just where she'd left them a short time before. And now travel is fun and it stretches the mind. And it's great to explore all the places you find. But when the trip ends, when you'd rather not roam, you can take it from Piggy. There's no place like home. I always like to come back to our home, too. Another one. Well, the tape's almost out. Tell me what you like best in Cheyenne. Tell me what you guys like best in New York. I like the playground. The playground. You like the playground in Terrytown? Yes. Ah, huh. what did you like in New York, where we in Manhattan, where we went to look at the museum? Did you like that museum? It was in Manhattan. It was the Museum of Modern Art. It was silly. Why was it silly? I mean, it was stupid. Why was it stupid? Because. Hunter's laughing over here on the other <laughs> side of me. He thinks it's funny you said that. Why was the Museum of Modern Art stupid? <laughs> huh? Because it was stupid. <laughs> you sure? You sure? It was stupid. Oh, it shy, was shy. funny. Stupid. Funny. Shy, shy. What did you like in it, Hunter? Um, that that picture that I always saw a hundred times. I liked the car. A car. Okay. What was the piece, Hunter? Remember where that? Where, and I saw that school and everywhere. Oh, one of the paintings. Yeah, right? that that like one more night nighttime, and like and it and it's this weird castle. Yeah. Remember that one? Yeah. And it's lots of blue and black and. And the Van Gogh painting. Mm -hmm. We see pictures of that all the time, don't we? We do do dance. I'll sing a song. You've got this little yeah. tape left. Yeah. 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 I'm going to hold it and you can both sing a song. What song are you going to sing? Pony. Okay, what's the pony song? I don't know the pony song. Now, oh, come on. What's a real song? What's the real thing? Um... My little pony is my little pony, and we in the pony, and then they got the pony and the tiny, <laughs> then now the pony, and they got art, art, art. Shy, and you're making it all up. Okay, you want to sing a song, huh, Shane? My little pony, my little pony. What should I sing? What should I sing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs>